Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the introduction, Ty. Uh, so today I'll be presenting on a project that um, we conducted at Toronto General within the last year, um, mainly to determine the effects of the protamine test dose and its impact on ACTs, but also how that affects the integrity of the circuit should we have to reinitiate car cardiopulmonary bypass um, somewhat urgently. So I have no significant disclosures to report. So I'll just start with a question uh, for the audience here. Um, when, as, institu as institutions, do you turn off your pump suckers when protamine is given? Does anyone here turn it off before the test dose even starts? Okay, great, that's awesome. Uh, anyone after the protamine test dose? Okay, a quarter of the protamine is in. And anyone with half the protamine in? Perfect, okay, so there's a little bit of everything here. Um, so what prompted the, this study at our institution was we've been having problems for years with circuits clotting off uh, post bypass. And that was mainly because we experienced pushback from the surgeons and the anesthetists um, for turning off pump suckers during and after the protamine test dose before the full dose is continued. And this was even despite readily available cell saver use, we do use cell savers routinely in our cases. So a little bit of background, um, I, I have three examples of clotted off circuits in the last, um, pretty much in the last year, and this was over a three month period. So three instances in three months, and that got us pretty concerned as a perfusion department, naturally. Um, so the first one was in May, I was actually a, par a part of. This was a reduced neurotomy, an aortic valve replacement, a tricuspid valve repair, a mitral valve repa repair, and a PFO closure. Pump time was three hours and 12 minutes. The loading dose was 30,000 units. I gave an additional 10,000 units on pump, and the last ACT was 953 seconds. The second instance was one month after in June. It was a mitral valve uh, replacement. This um, case, unfortunately, had two pump runs. The first was one hour and 42 minutes. The second, 44 minutes. Loading dose, um, 80,000 units, so a little bit of heparin resistance, uh, a little, and then 35,000 units were given on pump subsequently. And the last ACT documented on bypass was 498 seconds. And then finally in July, just a couple weeks after the previous uh, clotted circuit, um, in an AVR, pump run two hours, 16 minutes, 35,000 unit loading dose, 15,000 units given on pump additionally. And the last ACT documented on pump was 542 seconds. So to further elaborate on these cases, there was one thing that all three of them had in common. The protamine test dose was given, um, the suckers were still in use, and the perfusionist for each of those cases were, was continuing to transfuse um, the circuit volume up to the patient as needed. So in the first um, case, the reduced sternotomy, um, I noticed a clot coming out of the sock of the reservoir. So as soon as that clot was visualized, I stopped transfusion to the patient, notified the surgeon, and because this was a redo procedure, a triple valve, um, as you can imagine, this patient was a little bit unstable as we had just come off. So we actually had to bring the emergency bypass circuit in. Um, the patient was extremely unstable, but luckily the surgeon and anesthetist were able to gain control of the situation. Um, and so even though we had to prime and pass up the lines for, uh, with the emergency pump, we luckily did not have to use it. The second case, the MVR, the clot was actually noted on the oxygenator outlet. So transfusion was stopped immediately, and in this case, actually, the patient, unfortunately, was very unstable. The emergency pump was brought in, and they actually had to reinitiate um, and rearrest the heart. So that was um, obviously a pretty chaotic situation. And lastly, the AVR, um, the clot was visualized. Same thing, um, coming off the stock of the reservoir. The emergency pump was not needed. In this case, the patient was fairly stable, and the surgeon was confident that they wouldn't need to reinitiate. Um, regardless, um, Still not ideal having three clotted circuits in three months. So this definitely prompted change in our department. Here's some visualizations of the clots in a couple of these instances. So you can obviously see, I can actually get this over here, um, clot coming off the sock here and then um, in the reservoir as well. The blood's uh, starting to clot already on the surface. So in light of these three events in a short amount of time, we decided to conduct a short study that one, evaluates the patient ACT following the test dose of protamine, 
and this would in turn determine the phys feasibility of reinitiating bypass after the test dose was administered, but also a really good idea to see what the ACT of the blood would be if the suckers were still on and coming back into the reservoir. So, our study involved 120 uh, patients at Toronto General, it was a prospective study, and we collected data from July to November of last year. Um, and this is the form that we designed and gave each perfusionist before they went out into their case and asked them to fill out um, during and after their case. It just had some pretty standard uh, case demographics. It includes the date, um, the surgeon, the perfusionist, the anesthetist, patient weight, what case we were doing, the heparin loading dose, how much heparin we gave on pump. And then um, we documented four different ACTs on this form. So the first one was um, the last ACT documented on bypass, um, the ACT post protamine test dose. So this is the ACT that anesthesia would draw for us after the test dose was administered. Um, and then we do have an option here for the perfusionist to run an ACT simultaneously of the circuit. Um, that one wasn't used as much because as the study was going, um, most of the surgeons had started turning off um, the suckers during the test dose. So the perfusionist only documented that ACT of the circuit if the suckers were still on during protamine administration. And then, of course, the ACT post-protamine full dose was documented as well. And, of course, forgot to mention, um, in milligrams, the protamine test dose that was given and the protamine full dose. So our design, our aim was to keep the study as random as possible and we wanted uh, to allow as much variation as possible to play a part in the results. We really wanted to mimic a day-to-day -day case and we didn't want to create perfect scenarios because we really wanted to see what was going on. Um, and we didn't want to standardize anything at all um, because we really wanted to see what, uh, pr what we could change in our practice. So as you can see, all 13 of our surgeons were involved. 34 anesthetists were involved, and all 20 of our perfusionists were involved in the study as well. So many different practices. In terms of cases, we had no exclusion criteria as long as they were cardiopulmonary bypass cases. So it goes anywhere from a standard ACB down to a redo adult congenital case, um, multivalves, transplants, dissections, anything. So the first, um, set of data that we looked at was our heparin management on pump. So this is mainly um, perfusion variation. So all of the data points on this graph are only heparin that is given on pump. This does not include the loading dose. So in our institution, we um, do a loading dose of heparin of 400 units per kilo, of course maintaining an ACT greater than or equal to 480 seconds. And we found that in the 120 patients studied, 75% of the cases um, required redosing of heparin uh, throughout the pump run. And of note, it was on average the, that the perfusionist gave uh, an additional 15,000 units of heparin on pump. And the green line here on the uh, chart just signifies the standard 5,000 units that we routinely put in our prime. So the next thing we want to look at is where are we sitting with our last ACTs on bypass? So with the 100, 120 patients, we had an average ACT um, coming off pump with, of 650 seconds, the median being 604 seconds. Um, and you can see here we have the green line uh, demonstrating our target of 480 seconds. And just of note, we did have six cases that had an ACT less than 480 seconds prior to termination. So um, it was likely that the perfusionist redosed heparin just before coming off if they thought they were going to be on a little bit longer, or if they were about to come off, uh, likely did not treat the ACT. So this is where things get interesting in terms of the protamine dosing and the variability between the anesthetists. So the mean protamine test dose um, across the 120 patients was 36 milligrams, um, which translates to a test dose of 11% of the full dose. So nothing too crazy there. But when you look at the variation of the anesthetist dosing, you can see that they gave anywhere from 4 to 200 milligrams for a test dose, which translates to anywhere from 1 to 67% of the full dose of protamine being given. Um, so that was a little bit concerning. 
for us, and this is back to our point earlier that we really want to have a wide variation of practices within the study uh, to, stimulate, or to simulate what normally happens in our cardiac ORs day to day. So just a quick question. What would you predict the ACT would decrease by um, assuming a 10% protamine test dose was given? This would be a percentage decrease ACT. Okay, 30%. Anyone else? No? Okay, well, even if you're just thinking something in your head, keep that in your mind, and we will come back to this result shortly. So, the ACT post protamine testose. The average ACT after a testose fell to 377 seconds, the median 374 seconds. So, this was pretty shocking to us as a perfusion department. Um, because 81% of our 120 patients fell below the 482nd mark and were therefore unsuitable to reinitiate bypass if needed. The other quite shocking um, data point is that this, these 81% ACTs ranged anywhere from 104 to 477 seconds, which means some even went back to their baseline ACT with just a test dose. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, another just way to look at it is only 17% of these 120 patients studied were suitable to go back on bypass. And just as an aside, this outlier here, um, after the protamine test dose, his ACT was 999 seconds. This came from a PTE and that patient was cooled to 20 degrees. So back to the question that I had just asked you. So we looked at the differential of the ACT post protamine test dose. On average, the ACT dropped by 40% just after the test dose, the median of 38%. Um, so we can see here, as represented by the lines, um, these are like very significant and clinically uh, relevant decreases and very concerning to our circuit integrity, obviously. Um, we do have a few positive outliers, six positive outliers to be exact. And if you remember before, I said um, six uh, patients had ACTs less than 480 when they uh, came off bypass. So that could be in part due to the perfusionist dosing heparin right after they saw that low ACT before coming off and uh, post protamine test dose, that ACT reflected that. That's why it had a little positive uh, jump. So in order to really make sense of this data, we decided to compare the ACT decrease um, percentage post-protamine test dose versus the percentage of protamine um, compared to the full, the full protamine test dose. So essentially, we're seeing if there's any linear relationship between the amount of ACT decrease versus the amount of protamine given. So we've plotted all of the data points here. Along this axis, we're looking at the percent of the protamine test dose given in, in relation to the full protamine, test, the full protamine dose. And this is the percent uh, decrease of ACT. So the majority of protamine uh, test doses given by anesthesia fell between the 4 to 18 percent of the full dose, which is fairly standard. But we then decided to go one step further and subgroup the um, ACT percentage decrease in 20 percent increments and kind of see where most of our patients fell. So. Um, the largest group here, 43 patients, or 36% of our population, fell uh, had an ACT decrease of 21 to 40%. So again, very substantial. But the more shocking data here is that the second largest cohort, the 27 patients, or 22% of our population, had experienced an ACT decrease of 61 to 80%. So it's pretty substantial. Um, and then shortly after that, in 20 patients or 17% uh, of the population had a 41 to 60% decrease. So these are all quite significant in terms of maintaining the integrity of our circuit if the suckers were left on. So in terms of limitations or considerations from this little study that we did, there's obviously varying uh, time between the last ACT on bypass um, so um, obviously you know when you're pumping a case depending on how busy it is or how not busy it is that might ring off 10 seconds before you terminate bypass or 10 minutes before 
Um, and of course, some patients required additional heparin dosing after the last recorded ACT. So that's not necessarily accounted for in these results. Um, there's varying time between giving the protamine test dose and drawing the ACT. Again, we thought about this a lot, but we actually considered this a strength of our study um, because we didn't want to say, okay, anesthesia, you give the protamine test dose, wait exactly three minutes, and then draw the ACT because we felt like that didn't mimic the day-to-day -day practice um, of our cardiac ORs. You know, sometimes the surgeons say, give the test dose, okay, continue right away if they're quite confident with how the surgery went. Um, or they might give the test dose and not continue with the full dose for another 10 minutes. So um, we wanted to keep that uh, time period variable throughout the study. And of course, as you saw in my previous slides, there's a large variation of protamine test dosages um, and it's purely at anesthesia's uh, discretion. So there's large variation amongst our own perfusion department and how much heparin we do give on bypass. It's at our discretion. And of course the anesthetists and their protamine dosing. And there's no institutional standardization for a protamine test dose at our institution. And actually when we did talk to our anesthesia director, he was, it was actually quite a shock to him. He thought everyone was giving a 2% test dose of protamine. So these results were quite shocking to him. Um, but I think the most important conclusions that we can draw from the study that we did, and um, I think really spoke to our department and the cardiac surgeons, was that there really is no reliable way to predict how a patient's ACT will respond to a protamine test dose. There's no linear, linear reaction whatsoever. And regardless, the circuit in integrity is definitely a, at risk if you're using pump suckers while any amount of protamine is being administered. So in conclusion, and um, to much success from our department, our perfusion department at TGH has now standardized that pump suckers must be turned off as soon as the protamine test dose is given. This has raised a lot of awareness uh, amongst the cardiac surgery team as a whole. We've presented to the surgeons and anesthetists separately, and um, the feedback was very well received. And since um, the three instances that I mentioned, we've had no further instances of circuit clotting. Um, with the protein.